Okay, so now we are considering James Rachel's essay in defense of quotas. So this is an interesting essay um, on the usefulness of quotas. Uh, Rachel, of course, notes uh, that quotas are one of the uh, least liked policies by many people. But he does provide a very interesting defense of quotas. Um, so the first thing he notes is that a quota is very different from a racially, sen racially sensitive policy. So a quota requires a very specific number of uh, people from various groups to be hired for a position or led into a certain college, whereas a racially sensitive hiring policy just requires that the uh, people doing the admissions or hirings um, consider race as one factor out of many, but there's no specific requirement to um, hire a certain number of people. Okay, so he starts with a very interesting example, one which is not a morally charged one, so it comes from the social psychology literature. Um, and this is to illustrate a point that we all have unconscious biases, so a very useful exercise. If you want, you can take out your computer or open a new window um, and search implicit association test, and you can see your various biases in various categories like uh, race, race, um, religion, things like that. So we're all, we are all biased, and I do recommend at some point taking the implicit association test so you can see that for yourself. Um, it's a test designed by social psychologists. Anyhow, um, to illustrate the point, the way he does it is he uh, provides us with some research in an area that's not emotionally charged for most people, um, which is the fact that we are all subconsciously biased against people that are short. We think less of short people. We think they're less competent, and they're less likely to get hired, less likely to earn as much money, less likely to be very successful. Well, um, so here are some statistics. All right. He quotes a study that showed that when trying to distinguish between identical candidates who only differed in their height, so people were looking at resumes, they were exactly the same except one said six foot tall. <laughs> the other one, I think it said five, six or something like that, or five, seven, or some particular height. It was, it was less than uh, six feet tall. Only 27% recognized they were equally qualified. 72% thought the taller candidate was more qualified, and they had the exact same qualifications. So that's a pretty powerful bias right there. Um, this is an interesting statistic. The average difference in starting salary between tall and short librarians was three times as much as the average difference between those who graduate in the top half of their class and those who graduate in the bottom half. So um, being a tall librarian makes you give you a much better salary than being um, graduating the top half of your class. Another interesting statistic: only two presidents in the history of the United States were shorter than average. Okay, he says these points taken together have a discouraging implication. They suggest that it is difficult, even for people of goodwill, to prevent prejudice from influencing their deliberations. If I'm prejudiced in ways that I do not fully realize, and if I'm skilled, Ooh. excuse me, if I'm skilled at coming up with reasons to justify those decisions that such a prejudice leads me to make, then my good intention to think objectively, no matter how sincerely I want to do this, may be depressingly ineffective. All right. So. To illustrate this point, he has a thought experiment, which he calls his widget thought experiment. So you're the owner of this company, you hire someone who is the vice president for widget procurement, and you say, okay, there's these two factories that make these things, widgets, just some random thing. I want the 10 best ones. We need 10 every year. Um, so, and there's two factories, one's in Buffalo, one's in Albany. and your vice president comes back with 10 widgets, they all look really good, but interestingly, they all happen to be from Buffalo. And you're like, well, that's all weird, oh well. Same thing, and you know the one, the factory in Albany makes good widgets, so same thing happens the next year, all the good widgets came from Buffalo, all, all 10 that were chosen. So, 
um, what you start to think, because you know that the fact you know that the factory in Albany makes widgets that are just as good. Now, the odds are you get five from each. Now, that's not going to happen each year. You know, might get seven and three, or six and four, or maybe eight and two some years. But you should, on average, end up with five from each, right? And it should go back and forth. Okay. So what he says is, if there's a scenario like this, you, it would, act, and then you find out that the person who's picking the widgets is from Buffalo. Now it's not that she was doing a bad job intentionally, but she just had this unconscious bias. So Rachel says, what you would do best, you get better widgets overall on average if you said, okay, bring me the five best widgets from this factory and the five best widgets from that factory. The problem isn't that your vice president of widget procurement can't pick out good widgets. The problem is that she's unconsciously biased. So if you say bring me five from this factory, five from that, she can actually do a good job of picking out the five best from each factory. And um, what's going to happen is you'll overall get better widgets. The interesting thing, so you might think, well, say you institute this system, five from here, five from here, you might end up with a scenario in which a widget that you did pick is worse than one you could have picked. So maybe the best, the ten best would have included six from Buffalo and four from Albany, but instead you've got five from each. Now you've got a scenario in which you have one from Albany that's not as good as the one from Buffalo you could have chosen if you didn't have the quota system. But what was happening, so you could end up in any given year one or two or three, depending on random chance, um, or widgets that are not as good as you might get if you could choose them perfectly. But that's not our option. What Rachel's is saying is by choosing choosing the ten best or having someone that's biased choose their version of the ten best, you're oftentimes getting more widgets that are lower quality. So he's thinking this quota system and under these circumstances, it's not going to eliminate the fact that you don't always get the best person for the job. That's just a fact of life. It doesn't eliminate that possibility, but what it does do is it reduces it as much as possible. That's the way he's thinking about it. So uh, Rachel's is making an interesting argument for the use of quotas, and quotas are actually something that are seldom used. Affirmative action hiring policies generally don't involve quotas. They're more uh, racially sensitive than quota based, but he's making an interesting argument here for how quotas make a certain degree of sense. And he's not talking about like using them to um, make up for historical mistreatment. He's just talking about it in terms of he's thinking it's bad when the best person for the, the most qualified person doesn't get the job. And because that's bad, he's thinking the quota system prevents that. So he's thinking about a quota system that's preventing a certain kind of injustice people who are against affirmative action quota type programs think, okay, well what they do is they give um, you know, the job or the position to a person who's less qualified. Rachel's is actually arguing the opposite thing, which is uh, somewhat interesting and um, maybe makes sense under certain circumstances. He does have a list of circumstances under which he thinks it makes sense. Um, where he lists five uh, things. One is that the goal of the process is to identify the best qualified individuals for the purpose at hand. The nature of the qualifications is specified. A pool of candidates is assembled. The qualifications of the individuals are ranked from best to worst. And the jobs, promotions, or whatever are awarded to the best qualified candidates. So under the circumstances and under the circumstances in which there are implicit biases, unconscious biases, it does make sense to have quotas. And it's a very interesting argument because uh, psychologists have shown that we are subject to very powerful um, unconscious uh, biases, especially around race, racial issues. So something interesting to consider there.